Hello everyone, it's a refresh of the channel, but you know, welcome back if you've missed us. And in this video, we are going to talk about something that is very popular in the news, right? Which is DeFi. Now, a lot of people are very pro it, a lot of people are very interested in it, some people are very skeptical, some people outright hate it. And for those of you who are followers, uh, some of you have been asking, right, what do we think about DeFi and we're going to share with you pretty much everything we think about DeFi, why you should and why you should not hop on the DeFi train. As most of you who have already followed us for quite a while on this channel, you know that uh, Ross Stevenson, you know the guy with the Afro, right, used to be the main guy here. Unfortunately, we have decided to part ways. Uh, obviously, we look forward to working with him in the future, but uh, today we have someone uh, who will be replacing Ross, and that uh, man's name is Bradley. He's a good friend of ours. Uh, not from the financial space, but very deep into it, uh, especially crypto. And, you know, he has some experience in DeFi, and so, you know, we're just normal chaps, essentially trying to share with you some of our journey. We are not experts. We just want to do this so that, you know, we can get to know you and hopefully you can, we can share with you some of our mistakes actually, right? So that uh, you don't have to make them. So yeah, Bradley, you just want to introduce yourself about a little bit, you know, what you do, how you came to crypto. So you may have seen me in some of our Paros video. I've mm -hmm. done podcasts with you guys. I was a host to, of a podcast with them in as well. Um, but Outside of traditional finance, which is stocks and a lot of what uh, viral, the viral guys teach, I'm very, very into crypto, the DeFi space, and I've been hooked since early this year. And I thought, hey, what better way to actually promote and share the ideas, the knowledge, the philosophy of DeFi and crypto through video platform like this way it can reach a mass audience. And we want to try to make it as accessible, as easy to understand without actually dumbing it down too much to, yes. to make it too simple. And the key thing here is that a lot, uh, and if you've really started learning about crypto, right, and certainly that was our experience when we started, you will know that crypto is very complicated primarily because the people building the crypto community largely consists of, uh, you know, developers, coders, all that who are doing great work. The only issue is that because things can get really technical, so to the layman like us and perhaps yourself watching, that can be a huge barrier of entry. And so what we, what, what we are, are just maybe, if you're starting out, we are just maybe a few months or a year ahead of you in understanding this ever-changing and complicated world of crypto. So that's really how we're going to shift the direction of this channel and we hope that you can hop on this right now. On to the reason that you're in this video, which is why should you hop on DeFi or why not? So everything that we discussed here today should not be taken as financial advice. If you need financial advice, please seek or speak to a licensed financial planner. All right, so the, the, the reason we got interested in DeFi, um, and the thing is many people have very different views on why they go into decentralized finance and this very magical world essentially. But um, one thing we can all agree is that inflation is a huge problem. So if you didn't know, Recently, the US posted 6% uh, inflation. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but are you aware of this? Yes. So what, ha what this means is that if the CPI or the inflation rate goes up by 6%, and if your income has not grown by 6%, it means that you are actually already behind. Now, uh, you know, if you're a Malaysian, you know recently as well, broccoli prices have gone up mm. from 8 ringgit to 20 ringgit, quite crazy. So you know some of the things that you are used to buying are actually going up quite a bit uh, in prices. Now, I'm not going to explain exactly why that is happening because that will take too long, but essentially it's happening. And there is a problem with looking at inflation numbers early on, uh, or rather on in the newspaper. Mm. Because what a lot of people don't know about how inflation is being calculated right in, in the traditional finance world is they take a basket of goods and then they take like the aggregate, uh, maybe a weighted average uh, increase in the price of these goods and services. And usually these goods and services consist of like food, right? Or petrol or whatever. Now, the big issue is that a lot of things are also not included. For example, 
uh, housing prices, medical prices, educational prices. And you can do your own research, right? Um, the number is actually a lot higher than 6%. It's closer maybe to 10 And in the case of like medical inflation, it's probably 15%. Now, why is this a problem? Obviously, your money becomes smaller. Is your salary, right? salary is probably not going to catch up with it, man. Yeah, like honestly, you know, if, if I were to ask you, Bradley, right, how many yeah. 10 or 15% increases of your salary uh, have you experienced in your life? I don't know, man. Uh, I'm going to, I feel quite sad just thinking about it, way. Yeah, so so it really happens. Like I know some of my friends are working in the bank. Like seven percent is like a wonderful, uh, wonderful year. Already. Usually, it's about three percent, right? So this is going to be a problem. And the next question then is, okay, how do you solve this problem, right? We all know the way to solve this problem is actually to invest. Mm. But here's the problem, right? Inflation and all that is going at six percent, fifteen percent, ten percent, whatever it is. But when you put your money in the bank, you're only giving you what? less than 2%, then maybe you want to take a bit more risk, you invest in properties. That's maybe giving you 6%, but that one also, you know, it's not liquid, right? It's inside uh, a house. And then maybe you go to stocks. Now, stocks is a decent place actually to beat inflation. The only challenge is that most people don't have the time, unfortunately, to actually really do well in stocks and to research about stocks. So even if they hit 8 or 10%, uh, that's still barely uh, outpacing some of the inflation numbers that I listed above. So you really need 15, 20% in stock to do well. That's but not that, easy, man. Exactly. And and to, to your point, right, the reason it's not easy because if you look at the experts in this world that invest in stocks, big funds, right, most of them don't even reach past 10%. Only the top funds hit 15, 20, 25, or even 30%, right? Mm. Now, with decentralized finance, right, we know through coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum, it has easily outpaced inflation. Now, not only that, right? You can actually earn in crypto almost more or less guaranteed or risk-free 20%, 19, 20%. It's anyway between 9 to 20%. And that is exactly why we have been so interested in a cryptocurrency or DeFi specifically, right? Because it's not just about buying the coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's what you can do with them. And what you can do with them is to earn very low, with very low risk, right? 20, 25, 30% a year. And so why we are excited about DeFi is because it's one of the best chance, if not the best chance to outpace inflation for most people. But that said, there are certain risks which we will talk about later it's on. Real. And it's also a great place, right, for people who have no context, no so-called, you know, proper financial background and whatnot to actually make it big. To do it with other asset classes, I think stocks is still possible, but to do it with property, to do it with maybe even business, is it's just too hard for most people. With crypto, we know many, many stories of people who just got out of uni and retire. Like literally, it's that crazy. Then in some extreme cases, you know, there's this, uh, that people actually earn money on crypto to support their families, right, in certain mm. places. So there's a lot of things going on in DeFi, and that's why we're going to unpack a lot of it for you. And then I think the big one is that because it can really address your inflation problems the best, and it's not going to come from the bank or the government or any of the, uh, or most of the traditional uh, asset classes. I would say, right, I would expect people to actually ask, would it at this point be a bit too late? And if they ask you that, right, what would you say? What's your thought on that? So if it's too late, well, again, uh, what do you mean by late? If you're comparing it to Bitcoin and Ethereum, I can understand the feeling, mm. but what you have to recognize is that as time passes, right, more coins will pop up, more alternatives will start to pop up, and this is actually an opportunity for you to explore. There will always be new opportunities. In fact, Bitcoin's dominance, right, in the crypto space has been shrinking. It used to be like, I remember when I first started, it was like 75%. In a, span of, in a space of two to three years, it's now less than half. And then you've got Ethereum replacing a lot. And soon, guys will start competing with Ethereum, right? Mm. Some of the coins that we follow. So definitely the opportunity is there because it is literally transforming the world as we see it. And don't worry about what we mean by that. I will explain later on, especially the part about banking, uh, as to why... DeFi is really changing the world and why uh, either 
you know, maybe you don't want to invest in it if you are afraid of the risk. But one thing you cannot say is that you don't, or at least you shouldn't say, is that you don't want to study the space because that is going to be huge. Yep. So to add on to MJ's point on inflation, I highly believe that's one of the main reasons why we should not ignore DeFi at this point. Yeah, your 4 or 5% of your FD, no, not even EPF. FD, the EPF is... is still a viable option to achieve retirement at retirement age. But I think uh, the 6% is probably just the tip of the iceberg of what we'll be experiencing in terms of inflation. Am I right to say? Yeah, I mean, inflation is just... Uh, 6% is like just on the basic goods. Mm. But, you know, if you only live on food and petrol, then yeah, I guess you can treat it at 6%. But we all, uh, eventually, perhaps we want to buy a house or if we have a family, for example, mm. we have children, we pay for their education. Mm. You want to send them overseas, things like that. Yeah, then your inflation rate is going to be a lot higher. Yep. So that is one main reason, a huge reason. In fact, the number one reason why we should actually look into DeFi. But one reason I want to add is that going into DeFi and exploring DeFi, decentralized finance, is one of the best ways to actually regain power to the user. And what I mean by that, what I mean by regain power in the user to the user is that most banks, right, would have to look at your credit score, your history, what you've done before, what your earning power is to actually determine or not whether you are entitled to actually, hey, take a loan, uh, borrow money, yes, uh, buy a house, even buy a car, right? Decentralized finance or DeFi, in fact, bypasses all this. And I want to say, because of DeFi, because of me having to remember where my assets are, where my Bitcoin is, where my Ethereum is. And those are just the tip of the iceberg of the digital assets that I own. I am now much more aware, I in fact can say I have a larger skin in the game, right, of how my money or how my wealth or how my assets are working for me. Before that, I know I kind of own this insurance. I know I kind of own this like FD. I know a little bit of how much I own in uh, EPF. But I never really delve into how those are actually generating yields for me, mm -hmm. how that's actually growing, what kind of percentage I'm getting from those in terms of yeah. return. So I want to say learning about DeFi has been an eye-opening uh, experience for me. In fact, because I learned about DeFi, I actually understood, understood what uh, putting up a collateral means, yeah, yeah, what you, being liquidated means, right? Yeah. Like, and, and you know, you talk about loans just now, right? I mean, today, if you want to get a loan, you have to go through like all, all the, the entire process, right? Like you have to apply for it, you have to show your income, you have to show everything, right? And it takes a very long process. Like I know people who like uh, take loan, right? Need like one year to verify <laughs> with to crypto. Uh, yeah. Uh, and not, not, not so much to buy a car, but to refinance their house. But that's another thing. Uh. It's just to take a loan from an asset that they already own, you know? For crypto, right, the crypto world, right, you, you and I know, right, it's literally two seconds. You want to take a loan, you can take a loan in two seconds. Then you might say, right, isn't that risky, right, taking a loan in two seconds? Actually, no, because through the blockchain, some of you may have heard this term before, these protocols that allow you to borrow money, they already know your behavior. They already know what you're going to be like when you take a loan. So straight away, they can just give it to you. And they're usually very conservative about their loans, right? But I think that aside, right, to your point about uh, regaining back the power, imagine this for yourself, right? You work so hard, uh, you work nine to nine every day for maybe six days a week. Then you come home, you want to invest in your, your money, then you put in the bank and it only gives you less than 2%. Mm. You put it in bonds, not any much worse. You put it in stocks, you will feel like you, you need to learn a little bit more, right? Stocks, I believe, in the traditional world is the best way to get out of this. But then with crypto, straight away, right, you can earn 20% on it, right, relatively risk-free. And, you know, a lot of this, you know, crypto right, is literally eating the world. They are, you know, to put it simply, right, they are eating the traditional finance or the trad firewall, sludge, and they're only 1% of global wealth. Right, just think about it, right? Um, you know, it, it feels like, imagine like buying like a JP Morgan in the 1900s, right? So early. That, that really, that's one of the reasons why crypto is a place that will allow you to, to use your words, right? Regain power. Mm. If you're enjoying the video so far, please like, comment, subscribe, and click on the notification bell. And 
yeah, don't forget to follow us on our Telegram channel as well. It's going to be in the description section below. So I just want to add, right, the, the point, the reason why I want to mention power to yourself is because, like, I think the only person that you should really be trusting, that you should really allow power to, to control your wealth, control your assets, control your future, right, by default, is yourself. Because you think about it, right, um, the, the United States just printed, what's that, 20%, 25%? 40%. Over 40%. the past year, I believe, 40% of all money printed in the US have, was printed. That's so, crazy. In that sense, right, um, the banks being the premier institution that we trust to manage our finances, manage our investments, manage our future, has just given us a big fat finger yeah. to our wealth. Um, and just probably set us back by years by just printing unlimited amount of fiat money into the system. And not to say that I'm against banks, but I'm just saying that we should really, really focus a lot more effort on actually protecting our wealth and be open-minded to explore alternatives outside of just the traditional financial system. So that's why I wanted to highlight with giving power back to yourself when it comes to DeFi. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about the main difference in convenience in setting, setting up a, an account in a DeFi ecosystem versus the, the traditional finance ecosystem. Um, MJ, I know you wanted to share this story and I'm yes. very keen to hear about it. You yes. mentioned wanting to save it for this, uh, this recording today to talk about your fear of going yes. to the bank. So before I talk about that, right, the thing to understand about any rev revolutionary technology like cryptocurrencies, and here's the thing, right, guys, like, it doesn't matter whether or not, uh, you know, Bitcoin will be around or Ethereum will be around, right? They may very well fail, right, in the future, in the next five to 10 years. But one thing that will not fail is the industry, meaning even if these guys die, right, okay, there might be some confidence issues that arise out of it, but the industry is here to stay. And I'll tell you why it's here to stay. Every time we have speculative technology, technology that is unproven, new, you know, never heard before, uh, there's always a lot of skepticism. But those that survive are those that makes your life easy, right? Like social media, for example. People, you know, 12 years ago, if you said, oh, I want to be like a social media influencer or I want to build my, my business on social media, people would look at you and say, well, what are you talking about? Like, you know, like you do, you, you're just a kid or something. Yeah, like the richest, uh, the richest people on earth right now, income generation wise, man. Exactly, Influences. exactly. And so the same thing is happening with cryptocurrencies uh, right now, mm -hmm. right? Sure, MySpace failed. Sure, Netscape failed, but the whole industry itself has survived and he has thrived, and that's what's going to happen with crypto. There are few guarantees in investing, but one thing that's guaranteed is that the industry is going to move in one direction, and that's up. And that's why we want, I want to talk a little bit about convenience, right? why we want to talk about convenience, because every time, the, the biggest adoption of technology is always convenience. Social media makes communication convenient. Same with email, same with Google. Google makes uh, information searching a lot more convenient. So how it makes it convenient is this, right? So let's say if I go to a bank and I want to open a bank account, I actually get like nightmares, honestly. There's like this weird insecurity for me. I go there, then I have to like fill in form. I scared I fill in the wrong form. Usually the bank teller or whoever is in charge are not, not that pleasant anyway. Uh, but that's just my experience. Obviously, it's not everybody's experience. Um, Which bank is this? Which I, I obviously <laughs> cannot name the bank. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, but yeah, it's one of the top five banks like, in Malaysia. So, um, so that and also... Um, when you do transactions, uh, when you go to a bank to do a transaction, and uh, you just feel a lot more insecure. After a while, I got onto a little bit better, but even like today, I don't even know how to write a check, right? Honestly, I do let alone bank it in. So for you to open a bank account and all that, you know, it takes like days or maybe weeks, right? Mm. In some cases, then for you to transfer money. So maybe in between the same bank, it's not really an issue. But between banks or even cross-country, it can be quite a challenge, right? It takes days to transfer. With a DeFi wallet, you can create it literally within a minute. Done. No questions asked. You can transfer money across the internet, across the globe, within seconds. No questions asked. Mm. 
then is there an amount limit? Let's say if you transfer through a bank, usually there's an amount limit, 10, 20,000, whatever it is. You can literally transfer a billion dollars if you have it within a few seconds across the globe. No problem. Mm. And so, sure, there are, there are some back draws, drawbacks to this, right? Not all the infrastructure is built properly yet, but the fact that something like that is possible means you know it's here to stay. Really. So the question is, how do they make it more secure? How do they improve the whole entire process of setting up a DeFi wallet? And you're there. But in your experience, right, what do you say? What do you think, uh, what do you think is uh, the, the biggest thing about convenience when it comes to decentralized finance? I just want to add on to your experience in banking and I don't think you're the only one who feels that way, man. Yeah. I think that I look at my parents uh, who run their own company, right? Signing checks, multiple checks at one go and then going to different banks and delivering it, uh, putting into different envelopes to deliver to different customers' houses. I've, I've always felt insecure because that's not something that I do a lot of in my own line of work. And coming to the DeFi world and doing essentially the same thing, right? Through a crypto wallet, through typing in secret long-ass passwords, copy-pasting different addresses into... I mean, these are all the technical details lah, of uh, what you would experience once you have a DeFi wallet. I think this is something that I'm a little bit more comfortable um, doing in terms of, um, well, let's call it financial management. Right? Yep. In terms of setting up, I want to say that there's definitely a lot more room for improvement in terms of convenience when it comes to using the DeFi wallet. There's a lot of um, copy-pasting. There's a lot of different passwords you want to remember. And there's something called seed phrase, which is essentially either 12 or 16 or 24, or 24. different words, right? 12 or 24. That you got to kind of remember in sequence and it's highly recommended that you do not copy, paste and save this in a Word file because you know some of the risks of having yeah. things solid. We'll talk about security maybe in a future video for sure. Right. But yeah, continue. But it is just a little bit um, it's, it's, it can be much better and with the speed of improvement right now right? I think it's just a matter of months or even just a year away from it being just a one click solution to as you said uh, transferring one billion dollar from your account to mine possible yeah. I think convenience is definitely way 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 more way uh, higher, uh, way higher in, uh, in, the, in the DeFi, DeFi space uh. yeah so guys, before we move on, we will be having a segment called Question of the Week where we answer your questions. So please, you know, ask them in the comment section here or in our Telegram group chat, which you can find in the description or comment section. As we have mentioned in the beginning of this video, right, there are, crypto is such a new space. It is literally, as you said, buying Amazon in the early 2000s, right? Yes, yes. And it is without a doubt, and that's the reason why I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have heard of various multiple different scams out there that have existed. And I want to say that a lot of it, a large part of it can be prevented with some very basic due diligence, very basic common sense. I'm going to share with you this example. Uh, we both saw the, the video, the Twitter video, where this guy was literally live streaming. Yeah, the Squid Game token, right? So oh he was watching the charts, right? It was going up. And then if you guys are familiar with trading charts and all that, lah. The, the green candle was a long green candle and then it went all the way to zero. Yeah. So the market cap is $2.168 trillion. And now the market... Oh! Oh! It went to zero! Live in that, in that stream. Yeah. And the name of the crypto, the name of the token is called Squid Game. <laughs> like, Squid Game just came out probably a week ago. It's the biggest thing on earth. And yeah people would actually invest money into it yeah. without actually doing due diligence on the designers, the developers and all that. I want to say it's very much down to common sense, but what do you think? What do you think about that? Uh, look, I think whenever you have a booming industry, there will always be scams. Mm. That's a fact, right? Now, we don't want to paint this picture of DeFi that it is very pure, it's very safe, you know, it's like a fairy, fairy tale and it's not. There are a lot of scams and we actually spend, we will actually spend more time in the future, future videos talking about what kind of scams there are and how to actually avoid them. Um, but yeah, because of that, I think that is going to be a challenge. And that's one of the reasons why we started the channel, right? Because uh, in a way, we've been scammed in small ways, not big ways. And we know what the big scams are. We know what the smaller scams are. And so we want to share with you some of our experience. But if you've heard of this term called rug pull before, this is the alternative word in crypto for scams, right? In a way. It's basically someone, you know, you're standing on a rug, then someone pulls the rug, you fall down, right? Not yeah, a good feeling. that way it would originate. It probably, probably that. Lah, but I could be wrong. Let me know in the comment section, guys, if you know the origin of the word rug pull, right? 
But yeah, there, there are a lot of scams, right? Uh, email scams, Telegram scam, Discord channel scams. Our generation's version of the Nigerian prince scam. Ah, okay, yeah, that's true, right? So that is one of the big cons of uh, crypto right now. But not to worry, there is safe practices and certain standard operating procedures you can have uh, when it comes to uh, navigating the DeFi world. So one very uh, good thing that I always recommend to anyone I'm introducing DeFi to is that whenever you want to use a particular web app or website um, mm. that connects your DeFi wallet, right? Always go to the verified Twitter account of whatever website you want to use and then click on the website that is stated in the Twitter bio, right? So that's, that's the best because like uh, just to give an example, right? Um, you know, there was an NFT boom, right? There was a lot of people wanting to buy NFT through this platform called OpenSea. Yeah. OpenSea is the biggest NFT platform, right? Uh, out there now. So a lot of scammers know that people are very interested in NFTs. So what they end up doing is they create a website that looks exactly the same as the original one, but they change the URL, which is the internet, the website, a little bit different. So instead of OpenSea.io, .io, it actually is so sophisticated that it looks exactly OpenSea.io, but they actually changed the font a bit. So technically speaking, it is a different domain. Oh. <laughs> So a lot of people saw that. And then just for those few minutes, right, where Google ranks that scam website higher, people click into that, they connect their wallet, their NFTs, their coins disappear. Right? Mm. So how you, could you have avoided it? The best way is to go through Twitter, click on the website. And I think that's just one example, right? And that's why, again, this is the unpleasant side of crypto. But maybe, Brad, to move on to another thing that I feel that is not that great about DeFi right now, and it's not really DeFi's fault, uh, it's actually the process of on-ramping. So maybe you want to share with us what exactly is on-ramp and what is the process and why is it like a bit complicated and a bit inconvenient? So on-ramp is essentially you getting your fiat currency, wherever you're from, right? So where we are from, Malaysian Ringgit, into the crypto platform of uh, choice that you want to use. So in our case, um, well, so many different centralized yeah. exchanges just have use, been use banned example, here. Like so let's say if I want to get money from Ringgit to buy Ethereum, for example, I got to first get my Ringgit from my bank account to first transfer it to maybe a centralized exchange. In Malaysia, we have Luno. Luno is a, a SEC-approved platform. And from there on, I can purchase my Ethereum. But the thing about Luno is it only has, what, four five. or five different coins. And um, I'm not going to say, say, I just want to say those are not the coins that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. To get some of these more exotic coins, I would say, I would use the word exotic, uh, it's a little bit trickier and it's a bit harder. And since there's no regulated pathway around it, you have to go through third parties, P2Ps, that literally sometimes you make a phone call to and say, hey, uh, this is, is this the company that offers USDT exchange? Uh, USDT is a stable coin, by the way. We go into that next time. It's the USD equivalent for crypto. La. Correct. So you call them and you tell them that this is the amount of purchase. And what they actually give you is their bank account for you to transfer money into. And for that one minute, your money, whatever amount you have, right, 5,000, 10,000 ringgit, is literally with them. Mm. And if they do decide that, hey, you're probably the last customer we want to ever do business with, we want to shut down our business, they will literally yeah, rock pull you. They can you, take like. the money away. Yeah. Uh, it's a risk. It's a huge risk. But it's one of the only ways that we can now put money into crypto. Uh, in other words, it's the only way we can on-ramp right yeah. now. Yep. It's not like we can have like... Uh, I think certain websites like KuCoin, mm. they allow you to use your credit card and then you can start spending. But then again, KuCoin is... A, uh, how do I put it? It's not part of DeFi in a sense. It's a centralized exchange. So you still need to then transfer some of your coins from KuCoin or any of these centralized exchanges into decentralized wallets. Mm -hmm. But yeah, look, there's so much to say and I'm sure if you're first time listening to us talk about DeFi, you are probably a little bit confused. And no worries, right? Because your feelings of confusion is normal. And it's that's how we why felt, man. It's exactly how we felt. And quite frankly, as, the thing, as things evolve, 
we will also continuously feel a little bit confused as well. All right, guys, uh, you know, really, I, I repeat myself, right? There's so many more things that we want to share with you and so many whys we want to share with you. But just to conclude, the video is probably already like close to like 30 minutes long, mm. uh, which is that I think the most important thing is not simply about making money, right? I know that's the motivation of most people. But I think the big one you really need to take note of and you, that you should do yourself a favor is to actually learn more about it. And you know, that's why we are now reviving this channel so that we can share with you a lot of it. And in conclusion, um, DeFi is the biggest change the world has ever seen since the internet. The internet enabled DeFi and cryptocurrencies to flourish and it's, it's going to be a wild ride and if you are part of this journey, you are going to learn uh, so much, right? And so we hope that there's an attitude of learning, right? Which I'm mm -hmm. sure you are. Obviously, if you are, that's why you're watching this video. That's why you're watching all the way until the end. Now, guys, I'm sure you still have a lot more questions about DeFi that we probably miss, right? You can just ask us in our Telegram group chat, right? It's in the description. Also, if you want to leave your comments in the comment section, that's fine as well. 